the world's a sad place, isn't it? Or certainly seems like it to many people. Even the eternal optimist would be forgiven for for not being so optimistic at times with all that's going on. 2020 uh, won't be forgotten about for many years to come, especially because of the coronavirus pandemic and the way it has has changed so much of life. It certainly has changed the world. By all accounts, it has made people stop and think about life and what is life really all about. I think the thing that has surprised us all is is how the coronavirus pandemic has affected all of the world and that it hasn't just affected one or two countries or even one or two continents, but it has affected more or less every country in the world. And the thing is, and sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we're not out of the woods yet. Some countries are returning, um, or certainly in parts of several countries, what we're seeing is that they're returning to lockdown. We see it even across the water in England and in Leicester. Um, we see it in, in places like Spain and, and in some other places where what they're doing is they're returning to lockdown once again. And what we're also hearing is that um, there's going to be a second wave coming later in the year uh, to our own shores. And well, it gives us reason to be praying that that God will will save us uh, from such a thing. As a result of all this, a lot of people worldwide, they they don't feel much hope within them at the present moment in time. They're afraid. They're concerned. They're not planning too far into the future, as more than ever, it looks bleak if the coronavirus comes back to hit us with a vengeance. For so many people... What we know is that sadly they have lost loved ones who they saw as being a big part of their future. And then so many have lost their job, which understandably is of huge concern, as they don't know how they're going to pay their bills. That their job has gone, but their bills certainly haven't. I read the story of a man who on one occasion at, at, at dinner one night and he was a man who had spent many summers in the state of Maine in the United States of America. And he fascinated his companions by, by telling of his experiences, particularly in a little town by the name of Flagstaff. However, news came out that the town was to be flooded as part of a large lake for which a dam was being built and In the months before it was flooded, all improvements and repairs, understandably, in the whole town were stopped. Why spend money on something that, at the end of the day, uh, has no future? What was the use of painting a house if it was going to be covered with water in six months' time? Why repair anything whenever the whole village was going to be wiped out? So week by week, the whole town became more and more depressed looking as a result of this. Then he added this by way of explanation to those that he was at dinner with. Where there is no faith in the future, there is no power in the present. Praise God, the gospel of Jesus Christ provides what? It provides a great future. What wonderful promises we have for the present to help us each day, especially if we have been affected greatly by what's happening in this world. And we've been looking at many of these promises over the past 15, 16 weeks uh, throughout these morning manna devotionals. But what wonderful promises we also have for the future, both here on earth and regarding eternity. And again, some of these we've been looking at from time to time. The Saviour is not just with us today. The wonderful promises is that the Saviour is with us for the future as well. He has not just promised to take care of us today and, and provide for us today, but he has promised to take care of and provide for all of our tomorrows. And then what promises we have for the eternity to come. I, I, I think of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and from verse 13 onwards. I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and from verse 51 onwards. But then I think also of John chapter 14 and verses 2 and 3. Well, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. 
says Jesus. You believe in God, believe also in me. But then he goes on to say, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Where's he going to be? He's going to be in heaven. And where are we going to be? We're going to be in heaven with him also. I don't know about you, but in the midst of what we're going through, we can be excited for the future. We can be filled with hope and hopefully others then will see this whenever um, whenever they're in contact with us. So if this be the case as it ought to be, can I encourage us today that we act upon the words of First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 as we come to our busy be for today. First Peter 3 and verse 15 it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. That is Set apart the Lord God in your hearts. But here comes the busy bee. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Our busy bee today is to be always ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. And that's why I've referred to us having this great hope within us for today and for tomorrow and for all of our tomorrows and for all of eternity. But I wonder today, do we find witnessing to others about our faith something very difficult? Christians say, I can't witness because I don't know what I would say. Well, in response to this, can I say to you this? Prepare something And be ready always to give an answer for the hope that is within us. Prepare something. It's not what we're doing so much in life. We're preparing for different events. We're preparing for different actualities in life. If we're going off on holidays, what is it we do? We prepare for that so that we're ready for it. Or if we're building a house, we prepare for that. Or if we have to go into a hospital uh, for, for, for upcoming surgery, we prepare for that. Write something out for you to be able to read over daily. And thereby have something in your mind to say. Whenever people ask us about the, about the hope, about the faith, especially when so many people are afraid and, and so many people don't feel any or much hope within them. If we show the hope in the way that we live, we can be sure that we'll be asked about it. People will notice it. People will want to know why are we more upbeat than everybody else? Why are we more positive than everybody else? And what an opportunity it is, therefore, to witness of the Saviour and his so great salvation. And this with them asking and us not having to go and even to try. And witness to them. They open the door. As it were for us to witness. To tell them. Why we can be so different in these days. And why we have. A great hope. Within us for future days. Living in the hope of the future. It opens doors in the present. To witness to others. But how vital we be ready always. To give. An answer. The world we say is looking for answers. We have the answers. And it's Jesus Christ and His glorious message of grace, saving grace. And oh, what a future He has for us, for all who are trusting in Him. And if today you're not saved, well, this can be your future as well. But you today take that step. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Have tomorrow taken care of today. And be filled with the hope that so many of us already have. God bless.